here we have a visual of a sound source that is moving to the right. Now, what you can see here is because the sound source is moving to the right, the sound continues to move out from where, uh, where the source originally was at the speed of sound. But you can see that the distance between the wave fronts is no longer the same, when depending on whether the object move, is moving toward us. You can see if we're standing here, the object is moving toward us. If we're standing on this side, the object is actually moving away from us. And things are different. We observe different things because the object is moving either toward us or away from us. So when we represent it here with the sound source moving to the right, and yes, I will turn this off because there's no way you can concentrate with that on the screen. I can't either. So again, the distance between the wave fronts is the wavelength. So as the object is moving toward us, what happens to the wavelength? Carla? Um, smaller. It's smaller. The wavelength is decreased. The distance between the wave fronts is less. Therefore, the wavelength is decreased. Now, I want to get to talk about frequency. That is what we hear. So the frequency of that sound, how are frequency and wavelength related? Michelle? Uh, that would be the relationship between the, the frequency and the period, but I'm looking for the relationship between the frequency and the wavelength. Hannah? Um, we have a relationship of frequency and wavelength. I need to know what it is, please. Go on. Um, would you use the equation of velocity for if we're going to relate frequency and wavelength, we need to use the equation of velocity. The speed of sound is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. This means that the frequency is equal to the velocity divided by the wavelength. So the frequency and the wavelength are inversely related, which means if the wavelength goes down, class, what happens to the frequency? It goes up. Okay. If the object is moving away from us, the wavelength, what happens to the wavelength class? It is increased, therefore what happens to the frequency? It's decreased. So, what then does the Doppler effect sound like? Because that's what you're looking at right here. This is called the Doppler effect. I want to hear it. Headlight. Very nice. One more time, let's hear it. Very nice. So, the frequency is higher as it's coming toward you, decreases as it's going by you, and is decreased after it's passed you by. So, the Doppler effect. Fans of NASCAR have heard it many times. The equations for the Doppler effect, for some reason, are not in your text. Maybe it's because they look big and scary. I don't know. They are not big and scary. They are only big. You will not be scared. Say, I will not be scared. I will not be scared. Sound more convincing. I will not be scared. Song, let's hear it from you. I will not be scared. <laughs> so, I'm going to write out the equations, then I'm going to talk my way through them so that you can understand them, but it takes me a little while to write them down. So,
Here we go. O stands for observer or observe. S stands for source. And the V without a subscript is the speed of sound. So I will read the first equation. The observed frequency is equal to the speed of sound divided by the quantity of the speed of sound minus or plus the speed of the source, that quality, quantity multiplied by the frequency of the source. And whether it's minus or plus simply depends on whether the source is moving toward the observer or if the source is moving away from the observer. The second equation is the observed frequency is equal to the speed of sound plus or minus the speed of the observer divided by the speed of sound. That whole quantity multiplied by the frequency of the source. And again, the plus or the minus depends on when the observe, whether the observer is moving toward the source or whether the observer is moving away from the source. There are two different equations. Why? What is the difference between these two equations? Yeah. Simply has to do with whether the source is moving or the observer is moving. So this first equation, we have the speed of the source. The second one, we have the speed of the observer. So you can clearly see we're going to use one or the other, simply depending on what object is moving. 